there's always going to be in the world those ideas that you thought were true that suddenly proved out in the long term to not be accurate. Whether it be Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, or maybe your favorite politician. Maybe it was your religious ideas or your favorite local superhero or some other idealism that you had that wasn't quite perfection but was imperfect but you thought they were so cool and so neat that you put a lot of faith and stock in who they were rather than what they were. And you know, we all do that. We all have our superheroes that we want to puff up and make bigger than life because they inspire us. You know, and it's too bad that we don't take our inspiration from the place that God said to, which was himself, because he is the one who causes superheroes to come into being. He literally gives us that inspiration that causes us to become greater than ourselves, to exceed the boundaries of who we are, to become what he wants us to be. And you know, I like that, because if I would have known when I was a baby Christian or when I was young, all the scriptures that there are that God has given us, you know, to inspire us, man, I would have been thrilled to have been raised in the church, you know, and to experience all the things that I see, all these other people that were religious, that they had a chance and an opportunity to know. But you know, at the same time, I'm kind of happy that I didn't know anything until I got saved, because then I kind of look around and I'm a little more open, it seems like, to some of the things God is doing than some people that get regimented and stuck in certain boxes that they've somehow put their mindset in and gotten fixated on. And that's sad because it's kind of like, you know, what happens when your superhero dies? You know, it's like Marvel Comics, you know, I mean, I remember growing up, Superman couldn't be defeated. Oh, sure, there was a little bit of kryptonite, but you know, so what? He always conquered in the end. And now they tell me that they've actually killed off Superman. Well, what's that? Or like Batman or some other comic book hero, you know, they've taken this twist of turning them all into negative things and dark sides and kind of like exploring the alternatives. And wow, what a shame that is, you know, to have to turn things dark when they should be light. And you see, that's kind of what we do in our life, too. You can look at things, if you want to, from the sinful side. Because, after all, we are born in sin. We were conceived in sin, and we live in sin. This is a sinful world. And if you're part of the world, you're sinful. You're just like everyone else. You're part of that culture of sin, that expectation of sin, that realization of sin that the entire world, because it's been cursed, is under. And until you really give your life to God and walk with Him, you really can't stop sinning. You'll always be a sinner. You'll always fall into those sins and you'll act sinful. Oh, you may put on what you call good on the outside, kind of like what religion does. It puts this good on the outside, but you know deep inside there's that little sinner inside that's just waiting to get out and do something stupid or dumb or evil or is easily provoked in anger or wrath or malice. And that's not what God wanted from creation. Originally, he designed it without sin. We brought sin into it. We were tempted. We failed. We chose to not walk with God like we ought to. And so God determined at a point in time to take that corruption out of the world. And he will soon. But in the meantime, we live in a world that is always going to be negative. It's going to be at odds against us. And if you're a Christian and you're not at odds with the world, I think you're missing out on something. I think something's wrong with maybe the way you look at the world because this isn't your home. This isn't your existence. This isn't your life. Your life is yet to come. This you're just passing through to save other people from their eternal damnation because you're already saved. So when you take a look at life from that perspective that you're not here to get what you want, but to give to others what you got, 
then your world suddenly changes. Your worldview becomes a different perspective. You don't waste time on stupid things or foolish things that just occupy your own flesh, that cause you to sin, that causes you to be more provoked or angry at things, or even treating others with less than respect or less than what God intended for you to do for them. Because that's what God put you here for, to be his representative to all the people around you, to shine, as it were, in the midst of a dark and perverse generation, to be that example of a believer in every situation, no matter what your conversation is, to always turn it back to what would God do? What would Jesus say? How would Jesus act in these circumstances and situation? So, whenever you find yourself falling away into the world, because we are in the world, and you find yourself caught up in the world's ways and the way it does things, then take a moment to sit back, to stop, to think for a second, to recognize who you are and what you are, and that this really is not your home. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. The effect of righteousness shall be quietness and assurance forever. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come. You know, there's this attitude sometimes that people have that when they don't want to deal with stresses, or they don't want to deal with conflict, they avoid it at all costs. They flee, as it were, as though there were, the Proverbs talks about, like a lion roaring in the city, they flee as though the sound thereof. But there is no lion. And a lot of times, Christians do that. You know, they, they forget who they are. They forget that they have the Prince of Peace. They forget that they have perfect peace, that all we need to do is commit it to prayer and leave it there, and God will take care of the rest. And you can have peace in knowing that, because if your circumstances are anything like mine, you run into conflict all the time. You run into people who contradict themselves. You run into people that don't know how to deal with stresses in life. You run into people that are all turmoiled and torn up and knotted inside and they can't admit it so they vent on other people and you see all kinds of things around you that you know you wish you had an answer for because you know that you don't have that inside you have peace well that's because you committed to prayer and if you turn everything over to the Lord your God in prayer then he promises that you would have perfect peace that you would have confidence that you would be assured that he not only will resolve anything for you, but he will give you a peace that in the midst of any circumstances that you find yourself in, you'll be at perfect peace. <laughs> and when you have that kind of peace, it's like, who cares? You just enjoy the things that God has for you. As a matter of fact, you even find yourself in these situations and circumstances because you are the pillar of peace. You're one of the four pillars that God has that he can count and rely on. There's peace, love, mercy, and forgiveness. Wow! Imagine that. God reaching out by his grace to extend to the entire world his peace, his love, his mercy, and his forgiveness. You see, when you extend those four things to anyone, God moves in a mighty way and he solves their situation for them. Because there may be conflict that you have no idea that is going on inside them, but God is working in the midst of them because he lives in them. So where God is, there is perfect peace. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is peace. 
And so we have that confidence that we know when we commit it to God and leave it there and pray according to His will, then that which He wants to accomplish will be done and you get blessed for the peace that He's given you. Because Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. And one of the nice things about that is that you don't really need a Prince of Peace unless there's some place where there is no peace. And as Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So you can have peace today. You can not fear <laughs> the consuming fire, the devourer, the taxes in the land, the aggravations of occupation of, oh, will I be provided for? Will God take care of my needs? Of course he will. He always has, hasn't he? And you can always look to him with confidence to ask him for any of your needs. Always ask and you shall receive. Always seek and you shall find. Always knock and the door would be open. Because everyone that asks receives and everyone that seeks finds and everyone that knocks the door shall be open. Because Jesus said his Father would answer. So commit it to the Lord your God. Give it to him. Seek him and you'll find He'll come through for you every time. Not just once, not just twice, but every time. Because you can count on him. He may do it in his own way, in his own will, in his own timing, but he always comes through. Of that you can be assured.